Eat, eat with Mr. C. All the different treats that Mr. C eats. All the different treats that Mr. C eats. So what are we making today? We're going to bake a fish, a barramundi, in the oven. Let's use it, shall I? Make sure this gets all these corners. All thick enough. Cold water, wash it off. Let it drip dry. Now, on the thickest part, thickest part of the fish, you slice through right to the bone. Okay. The whole idea is when it's cooked, this will open up, and you can see this turn white. That means it's cooked. Shallots underneath. A bit of coriander and a bit of ginger, right? And black bean sauce. Put some food in there. Put some This is more than one glass of water. Okay, we'll mix it up. From the sauce at the bottom. Let's see. Okay, we'll put the fish in there. Okay, hey, beautiful. And then we'll put more. Coriander and shell off and put in the middle here so that the flavor will go through. Okay, we will split the chili, take out the seeds so that it's not too hot because that's where the hottest part is. Okay. Just a little bit, just to spice up the sauce. There, and she's ready for baking. Wait it a bit. Now, we'll give it a dash of light soy sauce. There, the fish is ready for baking. Now this size, half an hour, we have a look. Low upside down. Yeah. So what temperature do we have to set? 180 degrees. And the rice will be cooked. We have, uh, we have the rice to heat the microwave. This is biryani rice. The biryani rice, which is a bit spicy. And this is just plain boiled rice. All good. After 15 minutes, we'll wet the fish so that it doesn't dry up, okay? Let's wet the fish. When it cooks with the bone, it opens up, that's it, it stops. You cook any further, the fish will dry up, right? This is how you get perfect cooking of the fish. Whether you grill it or you bake it, doesn't matter. What are you drinking there? Uh, scotch and dry. Beautiful. We go, we're going to stir fry the vegetable with fish. Okay. Here's your, here's your broccoli, asparagus, fungus, and Chinese mushroom. This is pre soaked and softened in water. Okay, you got your ginger, your garlic, and your fish pieces. Check on the fish again. Maybe it's grating on a switch of the oven. You see how it's cooked? It smells good. You see how it's cooked? Go right down to the bone there. It's white, see that? Yeah. That means it's cooked, you see that? Right? Great. In that way, you don't have to go break the fish to have a look. 
if you if you don't cut it's one whole fish you wouldn't know and you start digging to have a look. By the time you serve people somebody thinks somebody has you try to eat it. So this is cooked perfect. Perfectly cooked. We'll wet it. The, the moisture to keep it. The whole idea of the moisture is to keep it from drying up, right? Now the oven. If you really want to keep it moist, you put a silver foil over it, okay? To stop it from drying up. It should be alright. We won't be long. There you go. You like, you like to heat up the plates? Yeah, always. There, there is a space in the oven, usually at the bottom. Put the plate to warm up. But I forgot to put it in, so I put it in while it's been switched up. After heating up the wok, just a dash of oil, I don't need that much, okay? Canola oil. Any cooking oil. Canola oil is a base of cooking. This is rice. They're a bit low in temperature, but they will do the job. The ginger and the garlic. And always stir up like a sprinkle of sugar. Just a small sprinkle. What fish is that? This is more. I'm just trying out. Normally, you see what this is going to go and see. You know, it's a, it's a very ugly fish. Have you seen it? No. Is it? it looks like one of those things, like a dinosaur at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> oh. You cook it mainly just to seal the outside of the fish. Okay? Just to seal it. You don't cook it right through. Now we fry the vegetable, okay? These are all the dry vegetables, they all can go in together. Except snow peas, you don't put them together. It's the asparagus, Chinese mushroom, and fungus. You just fry it for a little while, not that long. Just enough to give it a bit of a smell. Just bring up the flavor. You can also put a bit of sliced capsicum, great capsicum in there to give it a bit of color. But we're not doing it enough. It's too lazy. And then we put a lid on it and let it steam a bit. You don't turn the heat down? No. Steam While it's doing that, you can give it a taste of sesame oil, okay? And give it a taste of soy sauce. Now we'll add in the fish that's half cooked. Whether it's meat or chicken, it doesn't matter. And now we're going to thicken with the corn flour paste. The corn flour mix the water, so we'll stir it, make sure it's well mixed up. Not too much water. We don't want to stir up, break up the fish and move it over. And we'll put it over this side. And the corn flour is there. I will make it a bit more soupy tonight because we don't have it with the rice. And then we'll mix it up. Right. Avoid too much stirring the fish. We don't want to break up the fish. We like it in chunky pieces so that you okay. It's cool. All good. Like I said, if you put red capsicums, it'll give it a bit more color. But there you are, your stir fry. Beautiful.
mixed vegetables, stir fried mixed vegetables with fish. Right? The idea is where the bit of the stir so that it looks moist. So what's what's this? Pig barramundi. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm gonna get the knife and fork for this and dish up the rice. It's, it's baked to perfection. Not overcooked. What we do is to see where scrape where the bone is and break through the bone. Eat, eat with Mr. C. All the different treats that Mr. C eats. All the different treats that Mr. C eats. Where did you meet this German chef? He's not a chef, he's just a cook. He was working in the same kitchen as me. Where was that? In the pit club in Pitt Street. We were working under an American chef called Woody Fogg when he was there. Top chef in Sydney at that time. He was a very good chef. He taught me a lot about cooking. So How did you start out there? Oh, no, I didn't start there. I started working as a dishwasher in the in the nightclub, and then the chef walk off. Then the boss make, told me I, I could be the chef. I told him I couldn't cook. He said, "All Chinese can cook." <laughs> <laughs> I thought I couldn't cook. They don't worry, I get someone to show you. So that's how I got started. And then I was there for five years and then I went to work in Pickra for two years. And that's where I really learned my cooking. From this American chef, he was very good. He was willing to show me and taught me a lot about cooking. <laughs>